Imagine getting paid just for sharing your thoughts on products and services you use every day. With Survey Junkie, it's that simple. Click on the link in the video description to discover how you can start earning today by taking surveys. Victor Orban was his usual poisonous self, spouting toxic twaddle in true Boris Johnson slash Nigel Farage style. Hungary's hard right prime minister and Europe's saboteur in chief warned supporters at a Budapest rally that, without him, their country would be overrun by millions of illegal migrants and cease to exist as a nation. The EU was to blame, he said. The Commission was under the spell of his liberal nemesis, the Hungarian American philanthropist George Soros. It was secretly preparing to go to war with Russia over Ukraine. A vote for his ruling party, Fidesz, in this weekend's European parliamentary polls was the only way to keep the peace. We can only stay out of the war if Hungarian voters support the government, Orban declared. We must win the European elections in such a way that the Brussels bureaucrats in their fear will open the doors of the city to us and leave their offices in a hurry. Orban's slogan summed up the unsubtle approach of the EU's longest-serving, most subversive national leader, Occupy Brussels. No migration. No gender. No war. It's crude stuff, but it resonates in Hungary and beyond. Polls suggest Fidesz will win again despite reinvigorated opposition led by a party turncoat, Peter Magyar. Coming from Orban, such cynically bonkers europhobia is nothing new, but for one astonishing fact. He takes charge of the EU on July 1st. For six months, he will hold the rotating presidency of the Council of Ministers, which comprises heads of government and is the most powerful EU decision-making body. Several English country phrases come to mind, fox in the henhouse, cat among the pigeons, poacher turned gamekeeper. It's a crazy arrangement. At a time of multiple global crises, when Europe's democracy, defenses, prosperity, and values are under siege, only the EU would risk such a leadership travesty. Time will tell how Orban uses this platform. Given his pro-Russia, pro-China leanings, opposition to military aid for Ukraine and EU enlargement, and long-running, financially penalized defiance of Brussels judicial, civil rights, and media standards, it could be bloody and expensive. Orban, a man unconstrained by principle, typically trades vetoes for EU funds and favors for his country. No one individual personifies the Europe-wide struggle against the resurgent forces of right-wing reaction and regression better than he. Across the continent, radical parties, no longer marginal, are successfully weaponizing visceral fears over identity, migrants, crime, green climate action, gender equality, woke culture, and economic and physical security. Right-wing populist, nationalist, or sovereignist groups are predicted to emerge as big election winners this weekend, though still behind the two main centrist coalitions. For them, Orban is a role model. Unlike most on the hard right, Italy's Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, accepted, he holds his country's top job. Orban plainly enjoys ruffling EU feathers. He recently cut a deal with Vladimir Putin on Russian energy supplies, ignoring EU sanctions. Last month he welcomed Xi Jinping to Budapest, praising China as a pillar of the new world order, even though the EU regards Beijing as a systemic rival and the Xi-Putin alliance as a strategic threat. Orban had kind words for another of the EU's least favorite people after paying court to Donald Trump in Florida. He, Trump, has a very clear vision. He will not give a penny in aid to Ukraine, he reported. Orban opposes Kiev's EU and NATO membership and believes Brussels should be more supportive of Israel's war in Gaza. Sign up to Observed. Analysis and opinion on the week's news and culture brought to you by the best Observer writers. After newsletter promotion, all this could spark damaging ructions this autumn. Yet Orban's most profound impact may be on internal post-election politics. With inexperienced people moving into top jobs in Brussels, his influence may prove crucial, especially over the anticipated consolidation of victorious far-right and hard-right parties into enlarged parliamentary alliances. Like an overlarge spider at the heart of a complex web, Orban is already spinning Europe's future. He recently urged Maloney and France's national rally presidential hopeful, Marine Le Pen, to create a hard-right supergroup to challenge the mainstream coalitions the Conservative European People's Party, EPP, and the center-left Socialists Dem.